Well, good morning. Good Tuesday morning. Good to have you here on this uh, cold morning. Uh, boy, I guess it's extra cold this morning because uh, I have electric blanket on my bed and I fell asleep. Thought I turned it off, I didn't. And so a couple times the night I woke up very, very warm. Uh, but when you get, finally get out of bed and the heater hasn't been on all night, boy, it's freezing in our house. Um, but it is going to be a beautiful day. It's warming up this week, as the weatherman says, and it's a joy to just be with you on this Tuesday morning. Now, on this devotion I want to share with you today, it's actually one uh, that I uh, read from Lutheran Hour Ministries. I love reading the devotions. I have my other For All the Saints books. I have our Portals of Prayer, uh, our Daily Bread. Uh, my son Ben and I have been reading the Portals of Prayer and Daily Bread every meal, every day, and enjoying our time together in God's Word. But today I want to use the Gospel lesson from this last weekend. Uh, it was a little bit longer, but it had a lot of activity that Jesus was doing. He's going around uh, driving out demons, he healing those who were sick or infirmed, healed Simon's mother-in-law, and uh, how, ac how active he is. And yet, uh, the amazing thing we learn is it's not something that he goes around only healing those who are, you know, the nice ones or the ones who ask or the ones who uh, are saying, you know, Jesus, 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 but it's uh, healing everyone, uh, especially those who are uh, uh, bound by sin, bound by evil, bound by demons, uh, bound by illness. His job, his role, his love for creation is to come and to redeem, to save, to set free. So today I'm going to use a reading from Luke 4, verses 31 to 37. And it's about how Jesus loves the unlovable. Especially on this, I forgot to say, garbage day. Uh, reminding him how he loves even those who are sinful, those who are his enemies. Well, it begins with saying, And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit, had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Good morning, Sue. Well, I know this, uh, this passage is about Jesus' activity, but I want you to think from it. Did you ever notice that the man in this story doesn't ever ask for help? He's clearly suffering, and I mean, a demon is like destroying his life, but he, is, he isn't like politely asking, hey, Jesus, would you help me? In fact, he's not at all what you might call an attractive victim. He goes around yelling in the synagogue. He makes enemies by blurring out things that are bound to make Jesus in trouble with his enemies. He makes a scene by falling on the floor, or rather the demon makes a scene by falling on the floor. He's not a cute, wide-eyed child. He's not polite. He doesn't seem to be appealing in any way. He's just not the kind of guy that would tug at your, your heartstrings. And yet he does tug at Jesus' heartstrings. I mean, Jesus wastes no time. As soon as the demon starts yelling, Jesus commands him to come out and leave the man alone. You see, Jesus is concerned about the man. He wants to see him well, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that the man is rescued, that he's freed from his bondage, that he is back to the life that God has for him. And the fact is, this story brings comfort to me, and I hope it does to you. Because truthfully, I mean, most of the time, I'm not a particularly attractive victim, especially first thing in the morning when your hair's sticking all up in crazy ways. I can be grouchy, I can be tired, or I can be you know, frustratingly unhappy and persistent. I can go down a whole list. I might not even ask for help. I may even reject the help. And I think this is true for most of us. I mean, most of the time. Why should Jesus even care about us? But the fact is, he does. He sees us in our situation. He rushes to help. He doesn't wait until we ask politely or fill out the forms in triplicate. He comes to us and he, 
he pays the cost to rescue us. Even when that cost is his own suffering and death on the cross. You know, when we are not lovable, Jesus still loves us. Let me say it again. When we are not lovable, Jesus still loves us. He forgives us. He helps us. He strengthens us. He makes us his own people and has promised to give us everlasting life. Just as he himself has risen from the dead. I mean, he is love himself. Loving the unlovable. Loving people like me. Loving people like you. Loving without making sure that we go through all the things we need to do that we think would make us attractive victims or lovable people, but purely because of who he is. He is a God of love. And then he makes it possible. He makes it possible for us to do the same for others, which takes us back to the sermon from this last Sunday. Love, so we might save many. I mean, that's the love our, our God has for us. A love that doesn't seek to love the lovable, but loves the unlovable. A love that seeks to restore and care and bring peace and wholeness and life. He does that for me and you, and he sends us out into the world to do that for others. So allow that to be your, your theme for this Tuesday and maybe for the rest of the week, how the Lord is using you today to love those who are difficult, who aren't even asking for love, to those who need forgiveness that maybe aren't uh, seeking in repentance that you would forgive them. Think about how you might be able to convey that in the way that our Lord Jesus did for us. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I need you. <laughs> be with me and keep me in your love. Help me to live your love to, through our faith and hope, express that love into the lives of others. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me on this early Tuesday morning, on this early garbage day. I love always saying garbage day. You're, you're, getting, you're getting probably tired of me doing this, but I, I still love this little toy. But uh, seek to use this day as one to cherish the love that Jesus has for you and how you might be able to share that love with others in your life. Have a blessed day. Know that I love you and aloha.